Hi everyone, my name's Connor McDonald. Welcome to the KISS series, the Keeping It Simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. Each of these sessions are quick introductory sessions into the topic of partitioning, but unlike other tutorials, these are focused on developers. In the world of DevOps, developers now have to understand some of the physical design characteristics of partitioning. In this session, having covered partition tables and partition indexes, we're going to move on to the topic of partition queries. The key concept when it comes to getting performance benefits when querying partition tables is the concept of partition pruning. With any query, the definition of query efficiency is really the amount of data you had to scan in order to get the data you required. The closer those two elements are in terms of a ratio, the more efficient your query is. To demonstrate partition pruning, we're going to use this table called demo and we'll assume that it's got monthly partitions once for each month of the year 2010 and we're going to populate that table with 1 million rows using that simple insert statement. Thus we have 1 million rows spread out all over 360 days in the year 2010. Let's start with a simple query and have a look at how the execution plan looks slightly different when it comes to partition tables. I am querying the demo table with the timestamp, which is the partitioning key, of June 2010. The element that tells us that partition pruning is occurring is notice that on line 1 it says we are doing partition range single. That means we are not scanning the entire table, we are only scanning a single partition. So even though line 2 says table access full, that is a full table scan access path for a single partition segment. The P start and P stop columns tell us that we'll be accessing partition number 7. Of course, like any performance tuning course, you'll know that if you put an expression around the column of interest, whether that column is indexed or the partitioning key, etc., you immediately disable its use for general query optimizations, thus doing trunk of TSTAB immediately drops through to partition range all that will scan partitions 1 through 13 and thus is genuinely a top to bottom scan of the entire table. As we know, bind variables are generally preferred in high usage environments and partition pruning works with binds too. If I have a query such as where tstamp equals a bind variable, then the execution plan cannot tell us at explain plan time what the partition will be but it will give us information in the explain plan telling us that yes, we are still just accessing a single partition range and the P start and P stop will have the word key, which says at execution time, when we know the value of the bind variable, we will be able to limit ourselves to just a single partition. There is a lot of power in the optimizer when it comes to its attempts to eliminate partitions it does not use. For example, if I have a T stamp with a between clause between the 12th of January and 7th of Feb, or 3rd of June to the 6th of August, we start to see things called partition range or in the execution plans. This tells us that the optimizer will be able to piecemeal walk through the or conditions and evaluate just the partitions that are required. Similarly, if I do a T stamp in, you will see the keyword partition range in list in the execution plan. The limitations of the two-dimensional execution plan output mean that we have the keywords key I for the P start and P stop, but that is telling us that this will be a particular list of partitions that we need to scan. When you start looking at execution plans for partitioning, you may find a particular curiosity when it comes to interval partitions. An interval partition table consists of 1 million potential partitions. They're not all instantiated at the moment you create the table, but since a partition table has a cap of 1 million partitions and we know the interval, we know in advance every possible partition there could ever be, even if they don't exist yet. If I recreate my demo table, this time with a monthly partition which is defined as an interval, even though that table is empty, if I do a select star from demo, the execution plan will somewhat alarmingly say I'm going through 1 million partitions. There, of course, are not 1 million partitions in this table yet because it is empty. But that's the curiosity you'll see when you scan an interval partition table top to bottom. We are listing the potential partitions that may one day come into existence. We also have what we call no operation pruning, which is nice. 
if someone gives you a timestamp for a date which does not exist in any partition, you'll see the partition range empty in the execution plan. This is an optimization where the database will not even visit any of the data because it knows by definition that that particular date cannot exist in the partition table. In the next session, we'll look at more partitioned queries and how the optimizer can handle them. Thanks very much for watching. You can get the entire video series on partitioning from the playlist or just head over to asktom.oracle.com slash partitioning for developers. And don't forget to keep it simply SQL. See you all soon.